wish that I could stay. Wish for this moment to never go away. But it's all in my mind. And though I know that there is nothing to find, you're a beautiful sight in the summer night. And you can't put up a fight in the misty light. Good evening, everybody. You have heard me mention this guy through many, many videos, especially when we're doing a lot of the teaching videos. I know a lot of the newer ones have been more doing than teaching. This is a guy where I learned a lot of this stuff from over the internet, taking the time to email with me, explaining a lot. He's very good at what he does, and he also gave us a giveaway present. You guys see the layout tape measure that I use quite a bit? It's flat, has the 10 inch hold out. It is just what you want for doing something like this. Put a comment in this video if you're a subscriber and we'll draw it in a couple weeks and whoever wins gets the layout tape measure. But uh, Currently available from Vintage Tools. Vintage Tools and we'll put some information on there where you can find that in the description of the video. Now Jim can also be found regularly on the Forestry Forum. He's heavily involved in the Timber Framing Guild, the Timber Frame Engineering Council also. Yes. Jim has a lot of knowledge and uh, so you can, like I said, you can find him on the forestryforum.com. He's the moderator of the timber framing section, and he's very good about helping people out. Yeah, now I can do that. <laughs> so tonight we're going to talk about quickly about uh, box heart timbers. A lot of guys have asked, uh, how do you box heart a timber? Uh, we didn't have a really big uh, timber available so we're going to do it on our sketch pad. Okay so a box heart timber means that the center of the tree which we call the heart of the tree it's also called the pith p-i-t-h is in the center of the timber on both ends. So if this is an 8 by 8 timber this distance should be 4 inches. Now to lay that out on a log Here's your log on your sawmill. Here's your sawmill table. And here is this timber inside that log. So this end of the log is going to be bigger in diameter than this end. And the center is going down from end to end. You measure off your saw table to the to the tall end and then you raise this end of the log up till it matches so if this end is 11 inches off the table and this or 15 inches off the table and this is 13 off of the table you raise this end two inches then it's level from end to end so let's say we use 13 inches and it's level and 15, excuse me, 15 inches, and it's level. If we add the four inches to the 15 inches, this is now our last cut, is at 19 inches. You plan your last cut first. This is your last cut, 19 inches. If you want planks or boards above that, you can cut those. But your last cut is 19 inches. If you go lower than 19 inches, you're going to be less than 4 inches. Once the first side is done, you rotate it up against your log stops by turning it sideways. And this is face number 1. This is face number 2. And you, again, center your heart off of your bed the same 
both ends if it comes out to be 15 again it's great but it most likely it won't and then you plan your last cut on this face making sure that it's 90 degrees you cut boards or planks and work your way down after you finish side two and you rotate to size side three to make your cut this should lay right on the, the uh, saw bed and then you cut down until the last cut is at eight inches. Roll it to side four and do it again. Finish at eight inches. And that's your plan, your last cut first story. All right, so Jim has left, headed back to Vermont. We've got some stuff going on there tomorrow, but I do have to get a little bit done tonight. I'm going to need some braces for that uh, this purling plate we have on the horses. So I've got this piece here. This is a 5 by 10 I believe. So let's see how this uh, Super Sasquatch, let's see how this handles on a, how long is this rip? This kind of, a long rip is a really big workout for a saw. This is just over nine feet. Let's see what we can get this thing to do over a nine foot cut. See how hot it gets, see how it holds up to it. And uh, we're gonna do two of them so we get good square off of each side. And then we have to do a long rip, full depth, a full six inch rip on this side. And it may be a little tricky to balance that right on the side, being as how the, the deck of that saw is so big. And this is kind of narrow, but let's see. We're gonna, I want to test this saw out to the max, so let's see if we can do that. So I need a couple blocks because, no, look at that, we got them right there. I do not want to run that saw blade into this uh, purlin plate, that'd be no fun. Good thing I'm a slob and I don't pick anything up. Not yet anyway. Once this project's done, we're gonna have I'm gonna have a lot of cleanup on this thing. Well we'll get a uh, we'll get our line snapped first. Let's see where it goes here. And the spot there I don't really care for too much, but it's only in it's pretty shallow. It's in about a foot. I should still be able to get two braces out of this. Seems like a lot of waste and it kind of is. Double check. Too bad this isn't 12 inches long. I'd be able to get two out of it. But I'm just kind of trying to use up all the scrap I have. Why waste it, you know what I mean?
Well guys, I hope you enjoyed meeting uh, Jim Rogers. Now, Jim is an uh, in and out kind of a guy, so he wasn't here too awful long, but he did drive all the way here from Vermont and back tonight, so it was quite a trip for him. But uh, anyway, like I said, he dropped this off and asked me to do a giveaway for it, so that is exactly what we're going to do. This is a timber framing layout tape measure. It'll hold you off 10 inches. It's the same tape measure you see me using in a lot of layout videos. It's flat. It uh, goes out to 30 feet. Really nice tape measure. So, and Jim sells these um, through Vintage Tools NE. I'm going to leave you uh, Jim's business email address in the description of the video if you guys are looking for uh, all boring machines, things like that, chisels, vintage tools. He uh, fixes them up and sells them, and that's how he makes his living along with a sawmill. And he's a uh, pretty decent guy to deal with. I, I like Jim quite a bit. Jim has actually, Jim has taught me quite a lot about quite a lot about timber framing just through emailing back and forth over the phone. He's always been good about answering questions. He's a good guy. So anyway. Exclusive uh, Anyway, we got some brace stock cut today. I, I tell you, maybe I will have to sell the sawmill and just use that thing. I was kind of impressed at how cool that saw stayed doing a nine foot long rip cut at full depth. That's that's pretty impressive. But uh, so definitely, uh, if that thing stays performing the way it is and holds up uh, the way I hope it does. Definitely going to be a keeper, and hopefully it'll be a long-time addition to the tool family here in the shop. So I'm slowly gearing up to try to do this for production style. I shouldn't really say production style. More later on down the road, I'm hoping to get into timber framing as a little bit more of a uh, a little bit more of a career at some point. So we'll see what develops. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, thank you for watching. Don't forget, we're shouting out the Bearded Giant, the Farm Life, and Tecron Matic this week for our channel shout-outs. And uh, also, Jim Rogers, we're going to throw one more in there. Jim Rogers has a, a YouTube channel out there. He has some pretty good uh, how-to videos for timber framing. And it's just, uh, I believe his channel's just called Jim Rogers. So, anyway, thanks for watching, everybody. Hope you enjoyed it. I will see you on the next one.